Hey, Reality Youth, how's it going? How's your staycation at home during this quarantine? Hope everybody is keeping somewhat active and healthy. Uh, let's go ahead and pray and we'll start worship and try and get a little normalcy in our lives right now. <laughs> Uh, Father God, thank you so much for for this day where we can come together and worship you, Father. I pray that, uh, that you'd use the music to soften the hearts so that uh, we'd be ready to receive your word. And I um, pray that you would just, just be with us, Father. Remind us that we're not alone in this, what's kind of a crazy and difficult time in the world. And, and in your name we pray. Amen. Yeah. 
is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome power. Our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what can stand against? What can stand against? stars 
Good is it to gain the whole world, lose your soul. Good is it to make a sweet sound, but remain proud. In view of God's mercy. I offer my all and take my let it be everything of me. Here I am, use me for your glory. In everything I say and do, let my life on you. Here I am, living for your glory. Lord, I'm on the beats nowhere without you. The life I live finds meaning and surrender. In view of God's mercy. I offer my all and take my let it be everything of me. Here I am, use me for your glory. In everything I say and do, let my heart on you. Here I am, living for your glory. Seeking first the kingdom, seeking first the kingdom of my Lord, seeking first the kingdom, seeking first the kingdom of my Lord, and take my
Father God, thank you once again for uh, bringing us all together once again, whether it be in person or or over the, the internet, Father. Uh, you're still here with us, and uh, together we're a family, God. Pray that you'll speak through James and uh, give him words of wisdom that come directly from you, Father, and pray that you give us uh, ears to hear but hearts to listen. In, uh, in your name I pray. Amen. Well, uh, here comes James. <laughs> Good morning, youth family. Uh, glad you guys are joining us this morning. And uh, we just want to dig into God's word because we want to hear from him. So we do in youth uh, what they do in the big church. We preach the gospel and we love one another. So thanks for joining us. Uh, let's pray and then we're going to see what God has to say to us. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your goodness. We thank you, Father, for being with us. And even in the crazy things that are going on in the world, we know, Father, that you our truth and that and that as rocky as the world is that you are steady Lord and so we we just want to invite you in uh, to our lives and into our homes I pray that you be with us through this message speak to us now Lord um, Holy Spirit I pray that uh, you would be the teacher that it would be your words and not mine so uh, Father just bless this time together in the name of Jesus Amen Amen so we're gonna be in the book of James chapter 1 verses 1 through 8 so I did uh, teach out of James a, a few weeks ago it's been a little bit but I wanted to get back into James because uh, I really really like this book a lot and not because it shares a really cool name but uh, because James is uh, he, he was a, a very special man and, and he had a, a heart for God um, that I, I identify with a lot so I uh, just wanted to talk to you a little bit about this dude James he was the half-brother of Jesus so um, they shared the same mother and he was Jesus younger brother um, you can read about that in Matthew 13, 55, Jude 1, 1. Check those two verses out, if you would, on your own time, and then uh, you'll, you'll see that. And, and James, they called him James the Just, the church tradition did. He was the leader of the church in Jerusalem. And what's amazing is that he wasn't even a believer in who Jesus was. He didn't, at first, um, at first it, it took the resurrection and an encounter with Jesus to change his mind because he didn't even believe. Um, John uh, chapter 7 verse 5 says for even his brothers did not believe in him you see and that makes a lot of sense if you think about it because he was the younger brother of Jesus he grew up with Jesus so um, it would make sense that he would be doubting a little bit you know that was his older brother and he grew up with him and he he may have noticed that you know I never heard Jesus lie ever and he always was kind to people and he always did the right thing but that's his brother and so that was probably a difficult thing for him to understand and a difficult thing for him to see but what happened in, uh, check out uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 7 says, For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ, de uh, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remained to the present, but some have fallen asleep. After that, he was seen by James, then by a all the apostles and so I said all of that to say this it says uh, it says here that he was seen by James right so he, Jesus came to James with kind of a special one-on-one -on -one encounter with his little brother and that's when I believe James became a believer in who he was it was the resur resurrected Christ that changed everything and that's the same for us family um, all of us it, it's an encounter with the resurrected Christ that changes everything that's what changes our lives. That's what takes a, a drug addict and has him throw the drugs away. That's what takes an alcoholic and, and makes him dump the bottle out. That's, a, that's the thing that changes somebody who's dealing with anxiety and depression and replaces it with peace and joy and hope. Those things come from a personal encounter with the risen Christ. And if you're a believer, then you understand what I'm saying. You've had that encounter. And if you haven't, then I would encourage you to just invite Jesus into your life. Because it is life changing knowing the resurrected Christ. So, we're going to get into this book or this first chapter of uh, James. And uh, let me just read it to you. Verses 1 through 8 says this James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, 
that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If, you, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to you. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. And so the first thing I want to point out to you is this change that James uh, went through with this encounter with his, with his older brother, his older half-brother Jesus. You see, James starts off by saying, James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. That word bondservant in the original language is doulos, and it's translated slave. So he doesn't come to the, he doesn't write this epistle, this letter saying, hey, you know, guys, this is James. You guys know me. I'm brother of Jesus. Um, you know, trying to puff himself up. He didn't identify himself with that. He identified himself as a slave to God, as a slave to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that, that speaks volumes to my heart because a slave is in this permanent servitude to somebody else, right? They're, they're permanently identified as belonging to somebody else. And that's how James chose to, to identify himself. So this, this man who was an unbeliever until he seen the resurrected Christ, he had this encounter with the resurrected Christ, that changed it to where he said, you know what? I, I, the only way I want to be identified is as, as a slave, as belonging to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's, that's really an amazing thing, and that should be our heart, family. That's, that's, that's my heart. That's how I want to be. I, I want to be permanently identified as belonging to the Lord. And that's what true conversion is, family. Then he says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. And how many of us, when we're going through a little something, something, and we all do, um, our country's going through some things right now. All of us are going through some things right now, and, and, and we will. But how many of us are like, you know what? Things are not going really good right now, but I'm going to be happy about it. I'm going to find joy in the suffering. You know, none of us think of it that way. But, but family, we can, you know. I went through so many things in my life that I regret. There's so many things that I wish I wouldn't have done. There's so many things that I wish I could just get a do-over, that I could have loved that person more, that I could have cared more about that person that I could have handled this situation a little bit differently. And, and I wish I could change those things, but I can't. And different trials that I've gone through and different things that I've suffered through, I wish they were different, but I can't change those things. But you know what? I'm glad that I went through them because every one of those things led me to Jesus. Every one of those things led me to where I am now. And so when we go through these trials, when you go through these tests, you can count it as joy. You can count it as a, a kind of a measuring stick for your faith. You know, God, show me where I can do better. Show me where I'm lacking in my faith. Show me where I'm not trusting you. God, show me and, and help me to find your strength to get through this trial. And in those ways, we can count it as joy as we go through these things because we know that the testing of our faith produces patience, right? And that patience is endurance, right? We can, we can be patient. We can go for the long haul because we're in this. This is a marathon. It's not a sprint. We're, we're trying to get through life and endure to the end. And no matter what trials we go through, no matter what suffering we have, we need, we need God's strength to help us endure, to give us that patience. And it says that this patience, um, let this patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. You see, family, when we have faith and we get that uh, endurance to, pro to just... Um, like Pastor Henry likes to say, right foot, left foot, Jesus. That we just, right foot, left foot, we just keep moving forward. That we keep pressing on. That we don't give up. That we find the, the patience to endure the long haul. That's where our faith can grow. You know, it's not in the test that you, you don't get faith through trials. Your faith is tested through those trials and your faith is strengthened through those trials. You're not going to find faith in the suffering, but your faith can be increased from that suffering. And so that's a, that's a beautiful thing. You know, we, we need to just stay focused on moving forward. We need to stay focused on enduring to the end. And then he says uh, in verse 5, If any of us lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. 
And I found this to be true in my own life, family. I had a lot of questions before I came to Christ. I had a lot of questions. Uh, can I believe this Bible? Um, is there any evidence that Jesus ever existed? It, did God really create everything, or, or did things just evolve naturally, as I was taught in science class, through evolution? I had a lot of questions. And you know what? It wasn't until I finally um, asked God, and I, and I asked Him honestly, that I, that I prayed, God, I, I want to know the truth. God, I, I want to know what's real. And God gave me the resources that I needed to, to find good answers. So I, I, you have to ask God honestly, and then you have to do your part by going out and doing the work and, and looking for the answers yourself. If you're just sitting on your couch playing Xbox and you're just waiting for some answers to land on your lap, that's not going to happen, family. you got to do your part. But you know what I did is I, I, I came up with good questions, and I would ask God, and then next thing I know, while I'm researching and I'm looking at myself, God would be like, here's 10 books on that subject. Here's... 15 sermons on that subject. Here's some random person that's going to come out of nowhere, which, you know, is not random, um, to help me and, and discuss with me and, and help me get through those things. But, but God gave me the answers that I needed when I was honest about it and I asked. And it says here that if you lack wisdom, that if you ask, it says that it will be given to him. You see that? You see, God, God's word says that if you're asking honest questions, God will give you those answers. And that's according to his word. That's a promise that he made. And so we know that, that that has to be true. But it also says, but let him ask in faith uh, with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind, right? So you have to ask questions, but you have to step out in faith and, and look for those answers. You can't be double-minded about it. If, you're, if you really have a question for God and you ask him, then that's faith, that's stepping out in faith, right? Because you're, who are you praying to if you don't believe and if you don't uh, trust that there is a Lord that's listening to you? But then if you doubt that he, he has the ability to answer you or that he even cares enough to answer you, then, then where's your faith at, right? You're double-minded. The, the Bible says that you're, you're double-minded here. And it says that, uh, for let, in verse 7, it says, for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. So if you're, if you're asking God something, but you don't believe that God cares enough to answer your questions or that God is able to answer the hard questions that you have, then God's not going to answer those questions because you, you don't even believe enough. Faith is strong, powerful force. And uh, strong faith is what God requires. It's faith that, uh, that God is looking for in us. It's stepping out in trust. And that word faith I struggled with for a long time too. Uh, I was like, boy, what, what does that even mean? To be to have faith but it's trust right that's a better way that you can translate that word trust where are you putting your trust if you're asking God for something are you trusting that God's gonna answer that that kind of a thing and so that's kind of a uh, that's kind of where our hearts need to be family we need to uh, first look for um, the areas of our life where we're struggling and when you go through trials and when you go through things at uh, uh, times of suffering as many of us are right now and as our country is really really hurting right now and dealing with a lot of kind of heavy uh, subjects it's in these times and in these trials that you know you find out what it is that you're struggling with and, and find out what it is that you want to know and, and, and the truth that you're really seeking and take that to the Lord and then trust by faith that God will answer those questions but you got to do your part and you got to go look for those answers too you got to look for truth and uh, God will reveal those things to you he will do it and so a couple of things that I want you guys to just kind of chew on uh, this week to take home with you the first one is that an encounter with Jesus will change your life it's an encounter with the risen Christ just as it did with James it changed him from an unbeliever to saying I, I belong to the Lord I don't even identify with, with myself. I don't even identify with the family that I grew up with. I identify as a slave to the Lord, as being in permanent um, servitude to Him, being identified with Him permanently. That, that kind of an encounter with the Lord, it changes your life. It changes everything. It lets you know why you were born. It lets you know what, what, what are we even doing on this earth. It's an encounter with Christ to know your purpose in life is to know the Lord. That's why you exist. 
You exist to have a relationship with the creator of the universe. That's an amazing thing to, to really understand and realize that that is your purpose in life. That you were, you were created in the image of a loving God to have a relationship for all of eternity with that loving creator. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing, family. And it's life-changing. And if you do know the Lord, then, then uh, you understand what I'm saying. And if you've never given your life to, to the Lord, then, you know, I am begging you. I am begging you to invite him into your life. Take that step of faith and just say, Jesus, I, I want to know you. I want, I want you to be the leader and the ruler over my life because all I do is mess it up. I need you. Invite Jesus into your life. I'm begging you to do that. And then the second thing to take home, family, is that we're all going through some things. We're, we're all going through a little something, something. And, and as I said, our country's going through some serious things right now too. Um, but we can count all those bad times as joy. Knowing that God's in control of things, knowing that God knows what he's doing, even when we don't understand it, that God is doing something, that the, the world's not spinning out of control. None of this is coming as a surprise to the Lord. That He, that he understands us, that He loves us, that He cares for us. Um, that's something that's, that's really beautiful to understand, family. And to see that your faith in times of uh, testing, in times of trials, to see that your faith can soar, that you're safe, you can use that as a measuring stick, that you can take that trial and say, you know what, God, show me. Um, where I need to be better. Show me how to depend on you more. Show me how to have your strength to get through this because I can't do it on my own. So God loves us, family, and he loves you. And I just pray that you would realize that, that you would call on him, that you would cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you so much, Father, that uh, that you're in control and that, that uh, we don't have to depend on our own strength that we don't have to put our faith and our hope in uh, any kind of political party or that the, the president's going to save us or that the next election's going to save us or that whoever it is, family, is going to save us. But Lord, we can, we can trust that, that you've done everything and that if we step out in faith, Lord, and put our trust and our hope in, in Jesus alone, that we will never be disappointed, that you're always for us, that you're always with us. So I pray blessings on all of the youth family, Lord. Uh, touch the youth in this country and just pour out blessings on them and draw them in close to you. We pray for a revival in this country, Lord, a great awakening in this country. And I say, Lord, let it begin with our youth. Uh, Lord, just be with them and bless them. Keep them safe in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, family. I love you guys, and I hope to see you soon. See you next time.